Welcome to High Infidelity. The best cheating videos on YouTube. If you enjoy this content, remember to subscribe and turn on notifications. Now let's get into the video. Found out wife left the bar with a guy and cheated on me in his house. Let me begin with some background information. We've been together for about 17 years, have three children, an ancient property that we've been painstakingly refurbishing over the past two years, and our budget isn't the best, with no savings and a lot of debt. She's the only woman I've ever been with, and she'd only had a few of one-night encounters before I met her, so we were both inexperienced when we met. She's been the light of my life, and we've been through some tough moments together, always being there for one another. I felt we were one of the few who managed to keep on track regardless of the circumstances. Apparently, I was mistaken. With everything going on, trying to restore the home, both working full-time, trying to make ends meet, and making sure the kids were okay, we sorta of lost ourselves. The awful financial condition and health difficulties didn't help matters either. My wife had been trying to reduce weight for a long time, but nothing seemed to work, and her self-esteem had plummeted. We were both sad, but rather than chatting and comforting one another, we suffered in silence. I buried my nose in computer games to avoid our difficulties, while she was always engrossed on her phone. Things began to deteriorate during spring and summer. She spent more time with her friends and went out to parties, while I remained at home with the kids. I figured if I let her get off some steam, she'd return home in a better mood, but that didn't work. I tried to ignore the sick sensation that was beginning to settle in my stomach. I'd heard a report that she'd been caught kissing a guy at a dance in a neighboring town. When I challenged her about it, she denied it and said that the man attempted to kiss her but she pushed him away. I wasn't completely persuaded, but I didn't want to press her too much since I wanted her to know that I trusted her. However, as the summer progressed, I saw she become even more cautious and secretive about her phone. I decided to have a look after seeing her FB password by accident one night on August 22nd, to see if I could locate anything about the dance earlier that summer. What I discovered was even worse. I noticed that she had really been kissing a drunken male until her companion dragged her out of it, but that was nothing compared to what I witnessed next. I used Messenger and Skype to contact her. I discovered that she had been conversing online for months with two foreign males, A and B. It started on Instagram when a strange man, A, wrote her some charming notes, and she began chatting to him on Skype in early June. After just a few weeks of talking to him, she began exchanging nude images with him, despite her initial reluctance. Later that month, the event with the person she kissed occurred. She had been conversing with this person A until the middle of August, when he revealed his true intentions, he was a fraudster using a stolen account and sending her images from that stolen profile. Nonetheless, she had been duped enough to show him images of her most private portions. She seemed to be falling in love with him. By then, she had already begun talking to Man B, which had also begun on Instagram. It didn't take long for it to morph into naked photos and banner. In both occasions, they fantasized about visiting our nation and meeting my wife at a hotel. She never said anything negative about me, simply spoke about me as if I didn't exist. If someone asked, she would say that I treated her well, but then she would go on to tell them how she liked talking to them and how they made her feel wonderful. The worst has yet to happen. I discovered some more unsettling stuff in one of her talks with a female acquaintance of hers. They went to a two-day town festival in another neighboring town in early July, slept in a rented room, which I had agreed to and believed would be okay, and I was aware that my wife's friend, who suffers from panic attacks, had needed to spend the night at the local hospital. But what I didn't know and witnessed in their conversation was that she mentioned a 41-year-old person from our town, Guy C., a married man with children, who was unhappy in his relationship and whom she had met that night. He had came over to talk and had attempted to go all the way, but my wife had stopped him, according to her friend. She didn't provide a name, but since our town is tiny, I discovered a possible candidate, and I also discovered in my internet phone records that she had sent a message to a number belonging to a person who met the description. I was expecting the worst. I didn't tell my wife what I had discovered because I was frightened of what might happen while the kids were around, so I put on a mask and waited until Saturday, August 24th, to face her. I had contacted my mother and asked her to look after the kids. My wife is attending courses to earn some kind of degree for her job, so when she got home from class, I asked her quietly to sit with me and told her what I knew. There was no fighting, shouting, or cursing. We were just two miserable individuals, one of whom was furious and upset, and we chatted the whole night. She claimed that nothing had transpired between her and C, and that what she had done online was merely to attempt to bolster her self-esteem a little since she believed I'd stopped loving her. She didn't attempt to blame me for anything, and she didn't scold at me for poking around. 
she said she believed I didn't like her anymore since she wasn't losing weight, and when those gentlemen began showering her with praises, she claimed she became. She said she didn't want to harm me, but she was selfish and sought to satisfy them as much as she could so they would continue to laud her, so she sent them nude images. She admitted to me that she had been cheating on me but hadn't realized it while she was doing it, despite knowing she was doing something wrong. I really wanted to trust her. But I had reservations. We decided to attend marital therapy in order to attempt to repair our marriage. Things looked to be getting better as the weeks went. She's been much more loving and kind to me. Our life has been fantastic, and we've been spending a lot more time together than we used to. I still had a sinking sensation that she was withholding important information from me, and after our second visit with the marital counselor last week, she eventually acknowledged the truth. She confessed what I had guessed and dreaded but had hoped had not occurred. She had, in fact, slept with C that July night. Even though she admitted to feeling horrible and ashamed afterward, she continued to communicate with him over social media. She acknowledged to meeting with him twice after that, but just for a brief kiss. She even attempted to contact him again only a few days after I confronted her in August. My first reaction was to just freeze. I didn't shout, cuss, or do anything else. I didn't do anything to hurt her. I was glad that she had finally confirmed what I thought, but I also felt ashamed and wounded like I'd never felt before. I didn't want to hurry into anything, so I haven't thrown the ring in her face, nor have I approached the other man, since I don't want to be the one to tell on him to his wife or be jailed for assault. Besides, it was my wife who violated my marriage contract, not him. I'm not sure what to trust anymore. I had assumed that the lady I thought I know would never do anything like this. She's been attempting to persuade me that she was an idiot, selfish, and so on, and that she feels terrible for hurting me in such a way. She claims she's willing to go to any length to repair the issue and re-establish my faith in her. I honestly don't know whether I'll ever trust her or look at her with the same eyes again. Of course, I adore her, and I like being around her and seeing her smile. But it hurts my heart at the same time. I want this to work for the sake of the kids and our dire financial condition, since we can't afford divorce, but I'm afraid I'll lose myself and never regain any self-respect if I go through with it. How can I forgive her for cheating on me with not one, but three men? 4. If you include the one time she kissed a random man. She had been emotionally and physically cheating on all of them for some time. Not just one drunken night, but a two-month-long emotional and physical engagement with three men. It makes no difference whether two of those connections were online. She was still planning to meet with them, despite knowing exactly what would happen if they did. Is there anybody here who has gone through anything similar and can provide some advice? It's tempting to suggest, simply divorce her husband and move on, but it's not that simple. I still have emotions for her, and I'm not sure what will happen to our children and family. I also worry that if I divorce her, her relatives and friends will find out, and she may hurt herself or be in a mental condition where she would have a negative impact on our children. We also have an incomplete home and no funds, so we need to finish renovating it before we can sell it for any money. But after receiving so many positive comments from you all, as well as conversing with my closest friends, I was able to acquire some confidence in myself. I eventually realized, deep down, that there was no way in hell I could ever get over what my wife did, so I decided last Thursday to tell her I wanted to terminate our marriage. I guess she knew it was coming since she didn't appear startled. She made no attempt to influence me in any way. When I begged her to say anything, she just kept repeating, nothing I say would alter anything. She was sobbing uncontrollably because she phoned in sick to work. We've been notifying our closest friends and family about the impending divorce since then, but she's been very afraid to disclose what she did to her parents. My mother is aware of everything, but for some reason, I agreed not to inform the in-laws about what had occurred. Perhaps I was terrified of a fight between my soon-to-be ex-wife and myself, so I agreed to allow her time to inform them. We informed them about the divorce when we saw them last Sunday, but since we had to leave two of our kids with them for three days owing to a school vacation, it didn't seem like the proper moment to tell them about their daughter's various affairs. Instead, we informed them that there were some unresolvable conflicts, which made me feel terrible since they sounded so disappointed. They have been a part of my family for about 17 years, and I care about them. They have been financially and emotionally helpful to us throughout the years, and they like spending time with our children. I felt terrible about lying to them, but I'm scared that if I go ahead and tell them, my soon-to-be ex-wife will become hostile and make the divorce process much more difficult. My patience, on the other hand, is limited. If my wife does not come clean soon, I will ultimately inform them. I also don't want the actual reasons for the divorce to become public, since we live in a small culture and the truth would ultimately make its way to my children, who would be picked on as a result. 
I'd prefer keep the reality hidden from our closest friends and family, while the official reason would be that we split because we were growing apart, desiring different things, etc. I also don't want to be remembered as the sad man who had his wife porked by another guy. There are some major loose ends to be tied now. We need to sell our property and look for flats. The custody will be divided, with me having the kids for one week and their mother having them for the other. I also believe that their legal address should be with me, so that I will not be required to pay her child support. It would be unjust given what she had done. I'm not sure how this will end, but in my country, the mother usually gets what she wants since everyone feels terrible for them. But I will fight for my children.